Hello everyone. Welcome to the month of April. You know, I love this time of the year. Springtime. It's the time when flowers are blooming, trees are blooming, everything is growing from the ground up. And it's the perfect time that we get to sit back the rest of the season and watch them grow from the ground all the way up. But you know what? Not only do plants and flowers need to grow, we need to grow also, you and I. We need to grow to be more like Jesus. You know, Jesus had more humility than anyone. And this month, we're going to learn how we can grow to be more like Jesus. Yes, we're going to be studying and we're going to pray and ask God to help us to grow to be more like Jesus. What do you deserve? It's easy to expect certain things, to think that you've earned some rights. Maybe you think you deserve to play your game with no interruptions or to stay at the front of the line since you got there first. Maybe you think you deserve to eat food you really like at dinner every day, or to get brand new shoes every time your old ones get a little worn. <laughs> Maybe you even think that since you're older, you deserve to go to bed late. <laughs> After all, every single ad you see on a screen or billboard or magazine screams, you deserve it. But when Jesus walked this earth, he showed us a different way. Over and over, Jesus laid down what he wanted for the sake of someone else. His time, his energy, his life. Every day, we have amazing opportunities to follow Jesus by putting others first. You can show your little sister she's important by setting aside your game to help her practice reading. You can put another kid first by letting them go ahead of you in line. You can put your mom first by not grumbling when she serves her favorite meal. And you could keep wearing your old shoes and give the money to a place that provides clothes for kids in need. And you can put your whole family first by going to bed on time so that you're not super grouchy in the morning. Jesus lived out every moment of his life putting others first. His love for us goes on and never ends. So you can say thank you to God by giving up what you think you deserve. When you put others first that way, others can see God at work in you. That's why humility is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud. And now it's time for this month's widget with MC Haggis and Seamus McFamous. He's right again. Hey? Boy, that guy is 1,029 for 1,029. Oh, hey there, I'm MC Agus, and this here is Seamus McFamous, and we're here to show you this month's widget. Show it to him, Seamus. <laughs> it's the community garden fidget. Now, it might look like an ordinary pea pod, but you won't be able to put this fidget down. Hey! Hey! Uh, families can put others first by taking turns working the fidget while discussing the included questions about how we can be more humble in our everyday lives. So get yours today! All right, it is time for praise and worship time. But before we go to praise and worship, I want you to remember that God sent Jesus Christ here for us. Talking about humility, God sent his son, Jesus Christ, for you and for me. Remember that, boys and girls, while we're doing this praise and worship song. Let's really sing praises to God for what he has done for us. All right, y'all ready? Here we go. I think it's time to change my mind. I'm only thinking me, myself, and I. Laying down, 
of my pride Gonna put somebody else at number one this time Don't wanna be in a world where it's all about me I'll take second to whoever is around me I'm giving up my number one position So we all belong at number one together Laying down myself, trying to light on someone that would wash the feet of people. But Jesus, the most humble servant of all, he washed the feet of his disciples. Yes, a prince of, a prince of prince, a king of kings. He washed the feet of his disciples. That is humility. Let's watch as we find out about Jesus washing the feet of his disciples. The story before the story. Today, we're in John, the fourth book in the New Testament. But before John, in the very beginning, out of a deep, deep love, God made an amazing world. But when people turned away from God, the world was broken. God made a plan to draw people back into relationship. So at the right time, God sent a tiny baby to be born in the small town of Bethlehem, God's very own son, Jesus. When Jesus grew up, he began to travel from town to town, teaching and healing. At last, he made his way toward Jerusalem for the Passover feast. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone, I'm Brian. Jesus was about to head into Jerusalem where great crowds were gathered for the Passover feast. He asked two of his disciples to bring him a donkey and her colt. They placed their coats across the colt to make a comfortable seat for him. 
Now, Bethany, where Jesus was staying, was only a short distance from Jerusalem. Jesus had walked hundreds of miles on foot, so why did he need a donkey for a measly two miles? Well, great kings often rode victoriously on a powerful war horse. But Jesus knew what the prophet Zechariah had written long ago. Say to the city of Zion, see, your king comes to you. He is gentle and riding on a donkey. He is riding on a donkey's colt. Jesus was showing that he was a different kind of king, a king who came to serve rather than to order people around. As the people saw him coming, they laid their coats on the ground and cut branches from palm trees. They called out, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna! Hosanna! News about Jesus and the amazing things he had done spread all through the city of Jerusalem. But the religious leaders had been looking for a way to get rid of him and saw their chance. Jesus knew the plans of the religious leaders. He knew the time had come for him to give up his life. But first, he had a special message for his closest friends. As they ate the Passover meal together, Jesus stood up. He took off his outer robe and wrapped a towel around his waist. Then he poured water into a bowl and knelt down to wash his disciples' feet. The disciples must have been surprised, to say the least. Washing feet was a dirty job saved for the lowliest servant. Yet Jesus, who had just been hailed as a king, was washing their feet. When Jesus reached Peter, though, Peter put up a protest. Lord, are you going to wash my feet? You don't realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. When Jesus finished washing their feet, he put on his outer robe and took his seat again. I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet so you also should wash one another's feet. I have given you an example. You should do as I have done for you. Now you know these things, so you will be blessed if you do them. Jesus, God's very own son, chose to take on the role of a humble servant, and he asked his followers to do the same. Boys and girls, you know, Jesus always put others first before he did. Today, we're going to put the little ones first. We're going to let our little puppet friends come to us with the memory verse. Let's watch as they do the memory verse. Also, we want you to participate with the memory verse as well. Hi, I'm going to do Philippians 2, 3. Can you say that with me? Philippians 2, 3. Don't do anything only to get ahead. Don't do it because you are proud. Instead, be humble. Value others more than yourself. Philippians two, three. Let's do it one more time. Are you ready? Philippians two, three. Don't do anything only to get ahead. Don't do it because you are proud. Instead, be humble. Value others more than you value yourself. Philippians 2, 3. I want to hear you all do this. Philippians 2, 3. Value others. Be humble. That's what Paul is saying to the Philippians. Bye. Boys and girls, it has been great learning about humility. And we had the perfect teacher, Jesus Christ, to teach us and to help us grow in humility. Before we go though this week, let's pray. Bow your heads. Dear God, thank you for this amazing example of humility that Jesus gave us. It's incredible 
To think that Jesus, your son, would do something like washing the feet of his friends. We want to follow Jesus and put others first. But we need your help, God. Please help us to remember the example that Jesus gave us and put others before ourselves. God, we love you. And we pray these things that Jesus did will give us a better picture of how we're supposed to live and that we can be an example to others, just like Jesus was an example to us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.